Hey, I'm Brianna Regine, an award-winning brand growth strategist for entrepreneurs and decision makers who feel stuck and are ready to get strategic about reaching their next level. But let's be clear. In this podcast, we ditch the highlight reel and get into the raw, real stories of what it takes to build a brand from the people making it happen. No more perfect perceptions of success, no more unrealistic expectations, no more feeling powerless. This is your go-to space for the real deal holy feel about business growth, full of obstacles, funny stories, real talk, self-reflections, hot takes on current events, and must-have tips. If you've got a fresh idea brewing, you're a sucker for new strategies and insights, or you need to be reminded of how freaking dope you are, this podcast is for you. Let's get into it. Hey, you guys. I am so excited you are back for another episode of the Brand Unveiled podcast. This episode is our first guest and our first guest who happens to be a part of our Black Women Entrepreneurs of America campaign, which is a campaign that my agency started to highlight and amplify the work and the journeys and the incredible impact of 50 Black women entrepreneurs across America. Today's guest is Jasmine Jackson from Wyoming. Here's a little bit about Jasmine. In 2015, she was running her own event planning service called Jasmine's Events and Decor. But in 2020, she was working on expanding her business into something a little bit more solid. In 2020, she opened Cheyenne's newest event venue, The Louise, which is located at 110 East 17th Street downtown in Wyoming. And it's the former location of Reformation Dance Company. She named the venue after her mother's middle name to give thanks to the person who has always supported her through all ventures. And while some might question her decision to open an event venue during a pandemic, she said the building becoming available was too good of an opportunity to pass up. And if that's not the resilience and perseverance of Black women, I don't know what is. I'm super excited for you guys to hear Jasmine's story. Make sure you tune in, make sure you engage. And after you're done listening, go to her social media platforms, which are linked in the description. Follow her. If you're in Wyoming, book her, all that good stuff. Enjoy. All right, Jasmine, welcome to the Brand Unveiled podcast. Super excited to have you on this episode today, particularly as a highlighted Black woman entrepreneur, a part of the Black Women Entrepreneurs of America campaign that we're doing. How are you doing today? I am well. Yes. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So please, for those who don't know you, what is it that you do in business? How did you get started? So um, I own a, a, a wedding venue. Um, it's a wedding venue. It's a uh, um, um, music like venue um i host all types of events and like parties and all that so um it's basically a space for everything um i've had uh, like music uh, concerts there i've had bridal parties i have meetings um from anything that you want to do i do so yeah and what it, what inspire you to get started um, so my really good well friend years ago, um, I, I used to be like a preschool teacher, um, probably like eight years ago, eight, nine years ago. And I was in charge of everything with it. So, so like putting together all of the events left for it, um, and everything. So my, my like best beloved friend had told me like why don't you open up or go in or go into business to be like like a party planner and at that time I'm like nah I'm good I just want to do this for it for enjoyment and then I and then after a while I took her like advice and then so I went into business of being like, like a party planner and then probably that lasted uh, like three-ish years. And then um, I started hosting my own events and the parties. And then I realized after I had hosted uh, like a lot where I spend my most 
well, money on was a place to host it. So I was all like, why don't I just open up my own? And so I opened up my own space, um, 2019, yeah, 20, 20, um, and that was obviously during the, the, the pandemic. So that was very tough, but, um, yeah, so that was, that's the whole background of, of what I did to open. And how long, <laughs> how long have you been in business now? The 2019 you opened, how long have you been in business? Yeah, so uh, January will mark well, four years. Nice. Yeah. And out of those four years that you've been in business, what would you say has been a turning point, tw- turning point, excuse me, so far in your journey as an entrepreneur as like, oh no, this is... Like, I can do this. Like, I can continue to go on this journey. Right. So after I um, made it through through COVID, I feel like that was my turning point of, like, if you can make it through that, like, you can make it through anything. And I think that that's where my turning point was. And, like, I live in a community that that they, everyone is just willing to, like, help me and, and, and embrace me and um, and, and, uh, will push me to a uh, greatness. So, um, I feel that there has been times that I'm like, I don't know about this. And, um, and so there was never, uh, there was never, uh, me throwing in, in the, the, the like towel one moment, but there, there has been moments that I'm like, this is hard. Like, having a business shut right off of, off of, uh, off of well, COVID and like and everything. So that was like very tough. But, um, I think that, 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 that like COVID was my, was my like turning point of like, I could actually, uh, we'll do this. So. Yeah. But the pandemic was hard for a lot of businesses. Uh-huh. I think you're right. I definitely think you're right. You know, it's very fresh. Well, there are moments in our entrepreneurship journey where we either become frustrated, we're not motivated, Uh we're wondering if the thing that we're doing actually has any sort of like impact. Like, is it worth it? Right. Going through the physical, the mental, the emotional, the financial, Uh the spiritual. Is it all worth it? When was the last time you felt? like that question of is it all worth it is it all worth it um i feel like that many times especially when i when i give tours and and people have never been in my place and they are just like astonished and and amazed and so very uh, very uh, well grateful um i've i've I ran into people that they say that um, they're so happy that I've opened up my own event, event s- 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 like spaces because here there is not a lot. Um, you you like, like like you get the like hotel like, like venues and like and everything, but to have your own, not off of another business or. Um, off of a hotel that is very, it's like, I don't, I don't really like take it in until I'm, I'm, I'm told or, or, um, or my mom just, well, praises me or when I just walk in and I'm getting ready for a, a meeting or, 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 or a tour and I just am at my desk and I'm just in, in in like, and I just will look around and just will see how far I, I, I have well been there and and like, and all that. So I take it all in by myself at my place. So, um, that's, uh, I guess like, like a turning point. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. I love that. What do you think makes you different um, as far as like your event venue and really just like the experience that you give to your clientele? I know you mentioned that in your area specifically, a lot of people will go to hotels, right? Uh So you have a unique advantage in that way. But talk to us a little bit more about your secret sauce, right? Like what was it that made you 
that makes you stand out and that makes people want to book with your venue versus elsewhere? Oh, okay. So I'm, I feel like I'm a venue that accepts all like, um, especially being a black uh, uh, business owner, um, and living in a predominantly white like state, like that, that takes a toll on a lot. Being a black business owner, um, has really helped me out like tremendously. And, um, and so I think that I'm different with, 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 with just that, um, I feel like I bring a lot of, of like a personal to it. Um, I'm willing to go above and beyond. I, 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 I try to help out as much as possible. It's like, it's not like you book me and then like, that's it. I'm in it from the beginning all the way till the, like, 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 like till the, like the end. And so I feel that a lot of, a lot of, well, venues here, you just go and book them and then like, that's it. Everything else is on you. Um, and so I feel that I make it that I know each of my clients from the ins and outs and I will go above and beyond, um, I, I contact them after hours, which I know I shouldn't, but like, um, I try to be more like personal because, um, just doing this as a business, like I understand how, how, how hard it is to put like, like a wedding together or to put a party together. So I try to make it as easy as possible. So, yeah. Beautiful. And for someone who is just starting an event planning business or um, wanting to run like their own venue, what are like three top mistakes you would advise them to avoid? Hmm, top mistakes? Ooh. Ooh, I don't even know. There's many, I feel. Um, I feel like in my world, I have to experience everything in order to know what to do and what not to do. You definitely need to set your boundaries. Um, definitely because people will walk all over you. Um, like, like close friends, close, well, family, I, I've gotten more business from people I barely even know to, from, um, to, like, like, I'll compare to, um, my, my closest, uh, well, people to me. So, um, you definitely got a small set of boundaries. You get, like, 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 will definitely have to let people know up front that you are not playing as in, um, this is what I expect. And, um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't, I don't think I, I, I can't think of any off top of like what not to do. Yeah. So setting, setting boundaries. I agree. Like if you don't set boundaries, it's going to be really hard for people to respect your time, your process. Yeah. Um, and yes. basically what it is that you need to have set in stone in order yes. to do the job as confidently yeah. as possible. I definitely think that's, that's true. Yes. Um, I def- what about, um, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you uh, off. No, like, no um, I think, yeah, boundaries has to be your, 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 like, like, like well, number one from, from jump. Um, because if you don't, people will walk all over you and you will, and you will find that out real, real freaking well quick too so what about what about your systems and when i say systems i'm talking about things that maybe help automate certain things for you um or even just down to like um managing your finances like talk to us about what it was like when you first started in year one and now platforms or tools or just maybe manual processes that you've come up with that Mm -hmm. you can 
important and consider as essential because it saves you time, it saves you money, it you know, uh, makes you sleep better at night. Like, uh, is there are there any operational examples that you can think of? Um, be consistent um, because I feel like nowadays people aren't, and so I I I, I, I try to like, like, like compare from the first year that, that I opened to now is that um, a lot have a lot a lot has uh, changed from as I said uh, like before I have to do things to know what works and what doesn't work um, when I when I when I first opened I was open until in like until uh, 2 a.m. And so it was one event that made me change all of that, that it was that one event that they ruined it for everybody. And so set those um, rules and regulations of um, I, I only am open until 12. Um, and then any thing after that, obviously I have the, the, the I, I I have to like charge you, but um, so from then to n- n- now, I feel that um, beyond like top of every th- like thing. I mean, I feel that I'm I have managed it pretty well from being my own accountant to being a janitor to being a counselor to like I feel like I play all these like roles and my mom had told me that I need to give those roles to everybody else but I I've I've done it this long that I just feel 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 like comfortable and maybe that doesn't work for everybody but um I feel like four years has done its job. So I feel like, um, yeah, I don't know. You're, you're doing something right. <laughs> yeah. Apparently I'm doing that, well, that right. But um, I do see a difference of from when I first opened to now. Um, the, how I run my own well business Um I just make it more, more, more like personal, and I feel like that, uh, that that can be very, very well draining too, because um, you're in charge of everything. Everything is like on you. Um, so maybe time, well, management um, needs to be in place. Um, I have tried that many times. Of like, okay, I'm not going to answer my emails after this time. I'm not going to answer my phone calls and all this after this time. And, and then there's some times that I'm not doing anything. So then I'm like, why not? You know, like I'm not doing anything. And then that convo is leading to, to, to like 2 a.m. And so, and then I'm realizing like, how am I supposed to set these boundaries if I'm not doing it at all? So um, definitely yeah. set boundaries um, and just learn how to manage like, your time because if you don't, if this business, this entre- this entrepreneur life, this business owner life will eat you alive. Literally. Literally will eat you alive and you, then you yeah. wouldn't know what to do after. So, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. As far as your industry goes, the event planning industry or just like the event world right Mm -hmm. what are some trends that you like Mm -hmm. and then what are some trends that you do not like Mm. i feel like uh, there will always be an event oh there's an event literally every day so um i feel like now i like how much like Facebook and Instagram and all that has incorporated like has involved in my business of like keeping up with the 
the like new trends and the like new music and da 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 da. So um, I I try to incorporate um, Instagram and all that in what I am doing from like from when I like 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 first open on my doors to an event or when I am in the Am I closing up? I, I try to be on top of like what's the new like trend now, and that is a job. It's specific. Well, self of of um, trying to manage uh, Instagram and TikTok and all the freaking Absolutely. social media platforms. That's a job, and it's a job that you have to constantly. Uh, keep up with to be in the new trend and to be th- there in the presence that that was was it and so um, I think those I think that's what I like the the the, the like the, 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 like the like most of trying to uh, keep up with all of that. Um, what I don't enjoy is the whole. Um, is the, the the whole if you're not on TikTok and Instagram like in like in Facebook, that will really like harm mm-hmm. your business. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it's so like wild how much that like turns. Either you're on it or you're not on it, and it will like boost your like like your business or it will not. So. Um, that's probably the downfall of that because you have to constantly keep up. Um, and that's, and that's, and that's not even the, like, the, the, like running, uh, your own, a uh, business. That's a whole nother like thing. So trying to, to incorporate that into like my business is like, it's like, 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 I feel like that's like, like hard and tough and very exhausting exhausting and people are like why don't you hire a da 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 and I'm like why why that's another thing I like I gotta do and so I as I've I've been told lately a lot is that I like to have a control and I'm realizing Mm -hmm. that as I'm as, as as I'm getting older as I'm being in business a lot longer is that I like to have a control over a lot of the things because if it's not done how I need it to be done, that's a whole another thing of trying to tell another person, well, you should have done this, 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 this like this when I sh- when I could have just ha- had done it. So, um, it, like alleviating that on another person um, is very tough for me. So. Mm-hmm. Um, would you say would you say that's like you're in like a mm, I don't know how far you've gotten into that but it sounds like you've become aware mm-hmm. of that. Yeah. So do you foresee yourself maybe within the next year leaning more into that so you can lean away from wanting to have all the control <clears throat> that like this can reach a new level or do you think that it'll take you more than a year to mm-hmm. get over the hump of mm. Okay, I've been doing this for four years. I've been doing it primarily by myself. Mm-hmm. I know that things could be bigger. I know the potential I see in my business with that next step. I mm-hmm. know I get there. But because I want to control everything, I need more time to like be the opposite of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you, what do you yeah. feel like you have a, a, a stifle? You at all you're like girl i don't care what people are saying oh, <laughs> like, like, yeah. like, i'm curious um, i okay. i know i know i need to um hand the like torch to certain people of certain um things that manage my business um and i have taken little steps to do that um <laughs> Yeah, so with uh with that um and it's been really it's been like really nice because um there is times that I can't be at my at my at my like venue is because I am a mom and um and then 
trying to be a mom and trying to have full like full control over like my business it's very tough and and as i and and i as i'm getting older and as my son is getting older um i feel that it's okay to put all of these responsibilities on another person um my my child knows that that my business is very important to me. And so he understands that I'm constantly at work, but also it breaks my heart that I'm constantly at work. So, um, I, I think that, um, it, it, it will happen before like a year of handing a torch to another person um, not a full on blow, like you're running everything, but when I can't be there because I have my son's, well, dentist appointment or so like all that, um, I need to hire a person to do my tours and, um, open up my doors and close and da, 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 da. So, um, but in my head, I'm, I'm thinking that I don't want anybody else to know that another person is running my business. And I don't know if it's like, uh, why? Um, because like I put so much w- work into it and, Okay, so we li- I live in Wyoming, and so it's a very republic republic state, and so um, it's a lot of sh- will well, shock to a lot of people that I'm a black business owner and I run an in in an event like venue. So when people walk in. I are I sometimes I automatically already know that that they're like thrown back a bit and that pushes me even more and is is very like enjoying enjoyable to know that yes I am a black business owner and yes but this is all me and so when I so when I in vision another person uh was doing that and they are white it just makes me like feel a certain type of way like that they think that this is theirs i think that's honest i I totally Mm -hmm. think that's honest and i can empathize with why you are thinking that for what it's worth if you like Mm -hmm. to hear it i'm not going to tell it to you if you don't want to hear it do you want to hear it oh yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) okay I think for what it's worth, I'd encourage you to consider and revisit your why, Mm -hmm. why you started in the first place Mm -hmm. and focusing on that Mm -hmm. versus the ego part of you. That's Mm -hmm. like, I want people to know that it's always me. And Mm -hmm. I also want you to re re not reimagine, but Mm rearticulate that if you hire help, they're going to be the one running things. Mm -hmm. No, you're still running things. It's Mm -hmm. still your business. Mm -hmm. Um, The about section, it's still your name. Mm -hmm. Um, We found you because it was your name Mm -hmm. that was in the article, right? Mm -hmm. So don't let the ego of, I want it to always be me, Mm -hmm. me, 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 Mm -hmm. get get you in the way of being bigger mm-hmm. yeah. um, and, and, and bigger in your own context. Um, but if part of the why you got started, I'm just assuming and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. because you saw a need in the market mm-hmm. and outside of providing a need for the market, you saw a way uh, for yourself that could provide more for your kid mm-hmm. and more for you so if you are now getting in the way of that bigger concept that mm-hmm. that success of course then you want to think about that too mm-hmm. right so mm-hmm. I, but i understand what you're saying i think a lot of um entrepreneurs especially ones that i've worked with mm-hmm. yeah it's your, it's your baby mm-hmm. so you're like, mm, i don't know but when you start to really think about where you see your business going mm-hmm. you start to go, okay 
girl, put on your big panties and you just have to start trying stuff out. And right. for you, you've been in business for four years now, so you know the kind of help that you need. Oh, typically, right. I say, typically, I say, um, like within the first year of business, don't hire no help. Mm. Is that you don't have any venture capitalist funds mm-hmm. or anything? like that and if you're just bootstrapping it you should be the one doing everything right you need mm-hmm. to know how things run then year two year three now you start hiring people they may right. not be the people that stay you learn some things but year by year four you know what kind of help that you need now right. you have to trust yourself mm-hmm. to be able to trust other oh people. yeah most, the most bigger oh yeah vision. most yeah. definitely and that, that, takes, that takes time mm. that, that does take time that is a transition Very much but you you're here for a reason and you've been doing it this long for a reason mm-hmm. so don't rob yourself the opportunity of getting to the next right level. right but like that, that is true because I, I as i said i've 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 been taking little baby steps of having people there um that that like that i trust to um, opened my doors or to, to really like close of my doors. So, and there's been times that I have been out of town. So just those times, um, I have like, 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 like a few people that run my business while I'm gone. So just those little knickknacks really have been very, like very helpful. Um, I'm just need to get to the next level of like, um, of, 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 uh, letting a person, I uh, give a tour, um, mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. explaining my business and, 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 and all of that. And so I've been told many times that I'm very, an animated person. I'm very like, um, mm-hmm. I show all of my uh, emotions right then and there. And so it like attracts when I do like a tour because I'm just so like involved of what you want. And I try to be um, as helpful as, 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 as a possible. So trying to find like, like, a clone of me is very hard, but I also have to say that not everyone is like me. Like, like there's right. only one person of me and that's like, right. that's me. And so, um, maybe that person does do everything like, 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 like thing else. Like, 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 right. It's just, I need to implant that in, um, like my head that, that it's okay to let that person have that have that correct yeah you're not you're not gonna find another you Mm -hmm. and i think as business owners we always like i wish there was but that's i feel like that's not the best way to go about it Mm -hmm. instead because this business came from you Mm -hmm. focus on cultivating a culture that could bring qualities that complement the qualities that basically Mm -hmm. let you get this far and have them authentically be pulled out of mm-hmm. your, team yeah. to your company culture versus no, I need you to do it just like mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Gonna, I think that also too, with you saying that you're in a predominantly white state, like embrace the diversity. Like I'm sure. Oh yeah. Tough. I have been embracing it yeah. the fullest. It's- it's mm-hmm. probably tough, but embrace the diversity, not only in like what people see on the outside, but also mm-hmm. what's going on in their mind and like their mm-hmm. experiences and how they could bring their special sauce to complement what you've built, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but you know what? You have been doing the things, you know what I mean? And I think this episode and this conversation is going to help individuals who can relate to your, your yes. story your yes. challenges and i look forward to from a year from now checking to in, to, to look back and see that yeah, he just has came a long way yes because let me also tell you too there is power in delegation and mm. once you delegate you get spoiled like when you realize oh i can operate as this kind of ceo where people mm-hmm. are literally doing what i tell them to do because i created a healthy or exactly. ideal company culture to me that makes them excited and mm-hmm. like they 
far from me. And maybe you'll never find someone that cares about your business as much as you do. Right. It. At least through the company culture, you'll find people and you'll attract people and you'll retain people. Oh my goodness. They yes. In you and they believe in the environment that you've mm-hmm. given them. So they want to show up because they don't want to fail. Right. You. Right. And that's what will all your concerns that you have, that's what will get rid of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah. I and 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 I definitely have seen that in the past probably uh, two years and that um I'm bringing the I'm bringing the uh, uncomfortable to 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 a lot of people as in I'm doing things that no one has has like done here and bringing a culture bringing event like, like events that is is life for all bringing events that is LGBT. Yeah. 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 Yes. So I'm bringing all these events and awareness to people and just that as a whole, people are just like, I I trust you. I trust that you are doing like great things and you're bringing people out of their like comfort zone and people want to book with you because you can relate and do this and like do that and and go above and beyond and that's just that itself is so like very humbling and it it like tugs at my heart a lot because um just seeing the way but like things are here, um, it just it just what well pushes me to do those like things. As in, um, when I did my 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 a black excellence um, event, just highlighting all of the black business owners here, and and. Um, doing that and then doing like events for um a lot of uh, trans that don't have a place to host an event and so willing to work with everybody has been very humbling and to know that people would rather come to me than to anybody else and so that's very that that I feel like that's that goes along with what you asked uh, like, 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 well before of like what of like what pushes me and it's the all all of the all of the all all of the like people around me um that have my back like no matter what so yeah that's beautiful where can people find more about you and book with you um, on on Facebook, Instagram, around town. I uh, no, I, I I feel like I get my business a lot from 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 my word of mouth. Um, that has helped me tremendously. But um, on on Facebook and on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for listening to Jasmine's story. I hope that you enjoyed it. If something resonated with you, please like, comment, share, subscribe, all of the things. If you are a Black woman entrepreneur in America that wants to be highlighted either in our podcast, on social, or with a free pro bono consultation, please visit our website, www brvisionaryconsulting.com and in the menu you will find the link to the campaign or you can contact info at brvisionaryconsulting.com and we will send you information on how you can represent your state with the impact that you've been creating with your business as an entrepreneur please like i said like comment share subscribe and we'll see you next week